Hello everyone, Sierra tickets are halfway sold out now, so make sure you go over to gracewells.com, get yourself your tickets because they are going quick. On with the video. You join me another week at Gresswells where I'm doing a customer's car, which is Jack Statson. I do apologize about this shutter. It is so cold and windy outside that I can't have the shutter open and it makes a horrible noise when it's closed, which is very annoying, but I do apologize. Roll on summer where I can have that open all day long. See ya. All right, for the sake of the video, I am opening the shutter. It's very windy today. I do apologize. Got the BB here. Now, I've dynamited all the boot build. That's all situated, sorted all the leaks, got all that sorted. New pressure sensor, everything is mounted properly. I made these little tabs here to hold the boot build down. So that is solid in there and uh, Pretty happy with that. Back to what we're actually filming today. So, I'm doing some bits and bobs in the engine bay. Rust repair is what I need to do. I need to get the battery box out, get all this wiring out of the way, fix the bumper mounts, etc., etc. All your usual stuff. Now, this is going to be hard to film doing the rust repair, but I'll do my best to give you a, an in depth look of how we do it. So what I need to do is I need to take the top layer off, which is the strut tower, take the top layer off, cut it along here, get that out of the way, and then I'll probably have to repair the wheel tub, which is the skin underneath this rust. Repair that one, then finish it off by repairing the strut tower again. Well, that all together, seems to fill it all up, and that's done. And uh, yeah, that same process goes for this one, this one, this one, this one, all the just. So I'm gonna get in there, clean it up, get it ready for like cutting and then I can actually see how far the rust spreads. So I will use a grinding wheel like this. Death wheel is what we like to call it. Dig all that rust out and start making a plan on how to repair it. Right, so you can see this panel is double skinned only slightly. So what I'm gonna do is take the inner arch out because I'm gonna basically make this panel here, which doesn't include this panel, make this bit here, weld this bit in, and then weld the top piece, which is the outside skin, and um, which is the strut tower. Weld that over the top of that, overlap it, spot weld it. So you can see in the middle it's spot welded there, 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 there. And probably in the middle of this rust as well. Get that done. I'll take the wheel off, coil over out, clean up behind it because obviously all this underseal and stuff is gonna make the world pretty shitty. So clean the back side of it, clean this outside of it a bit more, get it nice bare metal, and then start making a panel for the inner arch. I gotta fix all this as well. There's clearly some bodgery gone on in there. Not looking forward to that one. But yeah, you did see in the other panel where we just cut it out, this line continues on and it has a little like half moon shape and then comes back up. So I'm gonna basically replace this area and it's gonna basically follow that line around here and then fill this whole square up with it and then the strut tower goes over the top of it.
is not comfortable whatsoever. Hopefully you can see this. I blew a couple of holes down here, not even gonna lie. Right, that bit's done. It was actually quite tricky to weld because it's actually a lot thinner than I expected, so it was blowing holes every now and then. But the metal I put in is 1.5, and probably the outside tub is, I don't know, like 0.6. It's well thin, um, so it was quite tricky to weld in, but we got there in the end. I did weld into the seam, uh, so it looks a bit goofy there. I will show you that, but I cleaned it up as best as I can. Go cut it out. Best tool ever. Now, if you don't know what this is, this is literally what it says on the tin, weld through rich primer. So naturally you would wanna have bare metal to weld, get a nice weld, but when you get an overlap panel where another piece of metal sticks on top, uh, basically that means if there's bare metal underneath there and any sort of moisture gets in there, it can rot from the inside out, which is why you'll see on a lot of these Japanese cars where the two panels meet together, like this, like this edge here, where they like butt up to each other. You'll see a lot of cars, they'll split like that. And there's not a lot you can really do about it, but try and prevent it. Like unless you take every single spot weld off the whole car and then redo it all, you're never gonna get rid of that rust. So, so that's why you put the weld through primer through there. That way you can obviously protect it and weld through at the same time. Make sure you don't skimp out on the weld through primer either because the weld through primer that you get, like cheap stuff you get, can really, really like ruin the world. So yeah, don't skip out on your world through, because it'll save you in the long run.
this is how I'm sitting. It's really not comfortable, but this is how I gotta do it. Film through the grill, all of that. But yeah, got that done. Yeah, that's pretty strong. That's pretty decent. I'm happy with the way it's come out. Nice little repair. Now just loads more to do. The neater the world repair, the better it is when someone has to prep it and paint it. So I always try and make it as good as I possibly can. Obviously I'm not the best ever, right? There's other bits you can do, but make a good job of it. Looks all right, I'm happy with it. I can make things look nice. That's where it needs to be. So now we've done that, obviously I need to do this one behind me, but I need to take a steering box off and stuff. So I'm gonna start here, take the bumper off. I think this might even be like aftermarket. This plate here, and someone's put it in. Obviously, there's a lot of mastic behind it. So, I don't know if that's real, but this plate looks good to, uh, you know, make a template off. So, if I can make that panel again, and just cut it out and weld it in, that'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Little shot from the inside there. All lines up. Looks a bit OEM. Obviously, you've got all the penetration from all the welds all the way through, and you can see the points where I blew through there, there, there. No, that's about it, about there. <laughs> there you go. Uh, blowing through is basically where the metal is so thin and you weld it, and basically the metal just melts around it because it can't uh, withstand the heat. So it just, you basically blow, blow through, blow a hole in it. And then from there, I just basically just blob the hole up with little tacks all the way around until I can fill the hole up and then grind it smooth again. That would naturally just always happen when you're welding rusty old cars. You get metal that looks clean, but as soon as you go to weld it, it is really thin because someone's been in there before, especially on this, someone's been in there before, ground it back, like seam sealed it or whatever, did a repair and then it was already probably started life as like a 0.8 like thickness of metal and then I just put 1.2 in or 1.5 I think it was 1.5 I just put in there so it probably started as 0.8 uh, it's basically whoever repaired it before seam sealed over it they probably ground it back seam sealed it that's taken like a 0.1 of a mil off then I've been in there ground it back again there's another 0.1 uh, and then it's basically, it just like, it basically adds up and then it makes it really thin. So it can look clean, but it could be really thin. So they'd be really difficult to weld. So effectively you should go bigger and cut further, but sometimes you're trying to localize the repair and keep it small. Otherwise it takes a lot longer. You've got to make different panels and stuff like that. It's, you get used to it. The more panel work you do, the more you get used to it, but you will blow holes in your ship. It happens, but uh, yeah, let me get this bumper off. With all that out of the way, we can now focus on taking this battery tray out. That's coming out, that battery's going in the boot because there's already a battery in the boot because it's got hydraulic battery in the boot. So it's already there. Um, let's have a look. Oh no. Oh, that's hideous. I don't think this plate's meant to be there. Or if it is, it's not looking good. <laughs> that is bad so i'm gonna cut all that out and start again because that's repair on repair on repair on repair and that's not a bit of me my phone's about to die so i'm gonna cut this out and catch up with you in a bit that yeah that's fucked that's no good um That's a nasty repair. 
And I basically got to come up to like here and then come all the way down to here. And then on the back edge of this sill, I'll have to spot weld it along this edge here. So yeah, that's fun. I'm gonna clean it up off camera again because it's, it's just boring. Uh, I'll show you me making some panels and yeah, let's get repairing this. This is not going to be fun because I've got to figure out where the bolt holes are and everything. Ah, no fun, no fun. But I do have this panel here. So that tells us where the bolt holes are and that's almost exactly what we need. So I can use this as my reference point and then make the panel and then I can, you know, because I don't want the bumper to be all skew whiff because it'd be annoying, wouldn't it? There you go, nice big hole, cut to size, got the panel ready to go in down somewhere. Where has it gone? Here. That's ready to go in. Going to basically get this in, weld this top edge on here, and then weld it from the back side down here on the chassis well as well. I'm going to butt it up at the bottom, and it should look OEM. This is a lot thicker than the standard stuff, so I don't have to double up with that brace in like this has a little double up on it that has a double up on it but this is much thicker metal so i don't need to double up on it and it'll look a lot cleaner when the bumper's in the bay so let's get this on If you ever wonder why I keep putting my finger on it, it's because basically, if I go like that, I don't want to have a lip on there. See that right here, there's a lip. You don't want that, you want it to be like this. Well, not like that, but. See, straight over. Here. Like that, so when it goes like that, it means that this, is higher than this one. So if you weld it, that's absolutely fine. But when it comes to grinding it, to get that to look flush like this one here, you're gonna have an edge, you're gonna have basically an edge of weld where it's gonna look like all skew with. And that is fine, but to make things really nice and just easier for the painter and whatnot, do it flush like that. If you do end up going like that, and there's an edge on it, that's fine, it's just a skimmer filler over it, but what I try to do is try and make it flush, seamless like that, less filler, less work, etc, um, etc. Et you'll, you'll notice that if you do have a ledge, like I just said, and you keep grinding, the metal will turn like blue, and that's because you're making it really hot and thin. Once you do that, leave it alone, don't touch it, because you don't want to, you want to basically grind the weld off, but not grind the metal thinner. So it's absolutely fine to grind it flat as long as you've got good penetration. Um, but yeah, a couple of little tips for you. So on that, I'll basically get the old hammer. Give it one of them. Here 
is a little bit more, but you get the idea. Just hit it with a hammer, bend it into shape until it works. Now, I'm going to weld all this up now off camera, and uh, I'll just show you it once I've ground it off. Not comfy. So, the inconsistency where I said I was trying to get the panel to go there to there. Uh, when you weld it, sometimes the panels can sort of like, say this is, oh, this is a bad example. Say that's the panel on the right and you're welding in between my fingers there. If you weld near it, sometimes the panel can go like that and then it won't be flush but it'll be like, and this is like on a very drastic level and it'll go like that just because of the heat of the world. So obviously my panel's all lined up and then as I got to here, see when it's like that, that's because this panel bent in and I carried on welding it. I didn't, I didn't double check it. So that's what that mark is there is because I've, well, it's not consistent. See so yeah, on here, it's pretty consistent. There's a little bit some bobs. Like you're gonna get this. You're not gonna be perfect everywhere. And this, I spent ages on this and like went in the inner arch hammer and dotted it back out and made it like absolutely like perfect finish. You're always gonna get like little bits like this. It's gonna happen. Um, but that's good enough for most things. Like, this is not like a three, five, six like full steel body car that like, had to be perfect with it that like, this is literally an engine bay and you know don't spend too much time on it because it's a ropey old dasum but i still gotta make a nice job of it ain't i so that looks nice down there nice around here this is good so i gotta do exactly where i'm sat now but the same repairs again on the other side i think i'll just show you the finished result before the end of the week and uh, that could be it for Friday's episode. I don't know how long the video is, but I'll obviously show you the finished result of both arches. When you get to this part of the video, well, for me, when I'm filming, I don't know how long the video is gonna be, like at the end of the week, when I go to edit it, like an hour before it needs to be out. I don't know how long it's gonna be. So I'll have like three hours of footage and it'll be like 12 minutes. I'm like, oh crap. So this is me filling and making the video even longer. But uh, I'm not going to film the same thing I've done here again because I've got one phone and one set of earphones and one camera, which is the phone. I want to weld and listen to music and grind and listen to music, but I can't hear when I'm filming. So it's so annoying, but it is what it is. Another little trick to make your repairs Instagram worthy is you get the DA, right? Get the DA, put like a 40, 60, 80, something on it, and you go over your repairs when they're in this state, and that way you get rid of all the scratchy lines, and that's how you get your repairs to look better on Instagram. Top tip. If you didn't put it on the ground, you didn't do it, did you? Let's be honest. That's a bad boy repair. It just makes your panel look a lot nicer for the ground. Because now, I uh, hear ground picks. Nice, mate. If we get closer, oh no, a bit of inconsistency. Which is absolutely fine, but welders are the most judgmental people on the planet. They will judge you. If you put a picture on the ground, you may need to make sure it's fresh. Otherwise, they'll get you. They'll be in your DMs. Fuck off. Here we go, there's one shape there. Not bad. It was quite tricky because I had to put this shape in here. So this triangle went all the way down here like that. And I just decided to make it like a, a rectangle-y sort of thing. Uh, and it was quite tricky to do. 
blew a couple of holes down here, which is fine, but yeah, there's one bit done. Now the last bit is that one. But I am literally going to go to the dentist now and get a root canal. So I don't believe that I will finish that in this video. But if you have enjoyed it, let me know. Hopefully this video isn't too boring. Uh, I think the outcome's good. But filming it has been difficult. Like this is a very small engine bay. And me getting in it and working on it and trying to film it all at the same time. Quite tricky. But uh, something different, I guess. I did it once before on my Mark II start of last year. And uh, people seem to enjoy it. It's quite good, but uh, let me know what you think. Um, obviously get your tickets for the Sierra. Over halfway through now, like I said, uh, they're going quickly. So I reckon by the end of March, oh, no, by the end of February, they will all be gone, definitely. Um, so yeah, get your tickets. Thank you very much. Let me know what you think about this. Did I do a good job? Am I awful? Let me know. Wish me luck at the dentist. Thank you. Goodbye.